TCI is brought to you by Astrology, a graded stakes winning juvenile by AP Indy. New to TaylorMade Stallions for 2013. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Breeders' Cup. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. JC, no top fives to talk about this weekend because we're going to talk about turf. This is the weekend where we see two winning your ends at Arlington Park. And this is really the time of year where we see what kind of competition are the Euros going to bring over. Well, I'm definitely not going to launch a top five for the turf division because, I mean, you just mentioned the Euros play such a big part in our Breeders' Cup turf races, John. Every turf division, seemingly, they hold a strong hand in because the class is so good over there. And when I think Arlington Million, I start thinking fall time, first of all, which makes me think Breeders' Cup. But more than that, this festival has the best European participation in North America leading up to the Breeders' Cup. So it's a very important trio of races, Secretariat, Beverly D, and then obviously the Arlington Million. We get full fields, you know, particularly in the Million here, a full cast, and we have some European participation in these races. Be interested to see how they handle American racing because I think the turf course is going to be very fast, so it's going to be very similar to probably what they're going to see at Santa Anita. Well, JC, you and I, we couldn't make it up there, but we do have Ed DeRosa. He's actually at Arlington Park. He's going to join us via Skype right now. Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. It's a beautiful day here at Arlington and expecting more of the same on Saturday. So, Ed, we got two winning your ends this weekend. Let's start off with the Arlington Million. You know, we see last year's winner, Little Mike, in here. Tell me, what's the buzz on him? Uh, well, it's a matter of can he repeat his form from last year. You know, last year the question was can he go a mile and a quarter? Can he carry his speed that far against this level of competition? And the answer is yes. But now it's can he do it again and can he return to that form? He has not been on top of his game this year, but Dale Romans thinks that the United Nations set him up perfectly for this. He said on a teleconference earlier this week that little Mike is back. I'm excited to see if he really is on Saturday, but I'm probably going to bet against him. You know, Ed, one thing a lot of people don't realize about Little Mike is, you know, here's a horse that was coming off the layoff in the United Nations, and he was just on Windstar's Farms, you know, small training track only a few weeks prior, so he definitely needed that race. I don't think there's any question. You look at the work tab, he didn't have many works leading up to that big mile and 3 eighths contest, so I do expect a better performance, but how's he going to handle the pace now when he's going to get pressure in this race from a horse like Nate's Mineshaft, who's a brilliant miler, mile and eighth type horse? I think he'll win the battle. I would expect Little Mike to finish ahead of Nate's mine shaft. I mean, Sky Ring went after him in the United Nations, and he ended up way back. And Little Mike, I thought, acquitted himself well. I mean, he didn't win, but like Dale said, he was pleased with the effort, and it does set him up for an improved uh, effort here where he already has won. But uh, I just think with some of the horses coming over from Europe, as well as Richard Mandela's South American import, Indy Point, uh, I think the waters are going to get a little deeper this time in the final eighth than they were last last year. Well, it looks like they're going to get a firm turf course. The weather looks good. Obviously, that would help little Mike, but you would think it wouldn't help the Europeans. I usually like the European form coming over at a real turf course like Arlington. <laughs> However, with not a lot of cut in the ground, does it help any? To me, it does look like it helps maybe Grandeur. Yeah, I would say he's definitely one of the ones to benefit. He did draw post 13, but he still is the morning line favor, and I expect him to take a lot of money. I think Indy Point training out there at Del Mar, which, you know, also very firm sur uh, turf surfaces out in Southern California, uh, this shouldn't be too big of a change for him other than maybe climate. Uh, so for me, he, he's the one to beat. I'm looking forward to playing him at 6-1 to one if that morning line holds up. All right, Ed, let's switch now to the Beverly D, and let's talk Phillies. You know, we see another good horse in here, Marketing Mix. She was second last year in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Ed, this is a horse that is on form right now. Tell me, what do you think about her chances? Yeah, I think she has a great chance, certainly a, a worthy favor. And it was great to talk with Craig Burnick earlier this week of, of uh, his family's ownership in the horse. And he said they're looking at the Breeders' Cup turf against males and then even a tilt in Hong Kong before they call it quits with her. So the thought uh, that they can get a local victory, they're, they're from Chicago to win here, I know would mean a lot to them. Uh, so they're coming here to win, absolutely. And it could be the springboard to great things for her the rest of the year. But I think this is the race where the Europeans have the the best chance with Dank and Duntel coming over. Yeah, talk about Dank and Duntel because they won't get the cut in the ground, but Marketing Mix of Philly that's very familiar with Arlington coming in is going to be your favorite. However, she is not a turn of foot Philly. She's, she's yeah. a Philly that likes to grind it out. So with a true European turn of foot, do you think Dank or Duntel, who do you prefer there? Do you like it in their class or their turn of foot? Who do you like out of that group? 
I would say a, a dank just from what I've heard. You know, I'm not a big horse flesh guy. I grew up in Cleveland, so I didn't see a lot of them growing up on the farm or anything like that, like a lot of my colleagues in Lexington. But I know who to trust, and I know people do look at it. And from all accounts, dank has just made an impressive uh, impressive showing in the mornings here. She is ready to run based on what people are seeing in the morning. So for me, if marketing mix is going to get upset, I'll take what I'll take the filly that looks like she's in form. And from all accounts, thanks the one. Got to love the European class. You got to love the turn of foot too. I, I do think marketing mix is certainly vulnerable. All right, Ed, before we let you go, you are the resident handicapper. So tell us what Twin Spire's doing over there. I understand you have a hundred thousand dollar guaranteed pick five on Saturday. Yeah, Arlington Park's putting up 100000 in the pick five, 200000 in the pick four. Bet them both at twinspires.com. And we also have some great promotions going on. Let Eight Ride at Arlington Park and Summer Showdown as well. So a little chance to get a little extra cash if you're right at Arlington. All right, Ed, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Have fun at the races on Saturday. Yeah, we will do. Should be a great day of racing, guys. All right, Joel, so it looks like Ed likes the Euros and the Beverly D, but he felt like that uh, California horse maybe had the upper hand in Arlington Million there with Indy Point. Well, it looks like it looks like he's going to the beach. I'm not, I'm <laughs> not so sure if he was really at the racetrack or not, but yeah, Ed liked Indy Point in the Million. It looks like he likes the Europeans and the Beverly D, and I sort of agree with him in the Beverly D, John. I just see marketing mix as a high-class mare, but she doesn't have that turn of foot that usually the Europeans do. So if it turns out to be a race that, you know, those Europeans can close in on marketing mix in the stretch, I think she can be upset in here because those Europeans usually have a ton of class and certainly Dank and Dunnell, two fillies that have some pretty good form this year. In the million, I like Real Solution. I think he could hmm. be North America's top turf horse going long. Now that point of entry is on the sidelines. I thought he ran great against point of entry last time out on Belmont Stakes Day. You know, he missed the Man Award. He got a little sick, a minor, minor setback there. But now they're deciding to shift him to Chicago. I think he has enough speed to sort of, you know, sit off of Little Mike in a tracking position and get maybe first run in the stretch to kind of beat a horse like Grandor, who's a deep closer to the punch. So I think Real Solution can post an upset in the million, but a very deep and contentious group in the million. I'm not sure the quality is as good this year, but I'm very interested to see the outcomes of these two races. You know, we mentioned those two races, but we said this is really a turf festival. There's also a good three-year-old race. Who do you like in that race? Yeah, and that's the Secretariat, a grade one. You know, it is a mile and a quarter, and what's interesting is I'm not so sure the Americans want to go that far. You know, the horse is coming out of the Virginia Derby. That's Ryder Luke, who's probably going to be your pace player in here. Uh, and, you know, you, you certainly have Jack Milton as well, your morning line favorite. But I wouldn't be surprised if one of these Europeans that don't have a ton of form there, you know, steps up here, appreciates the mile and a quarter distance and proves to be best. All right. Thank you, Joel. And thank yep. you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap these races. Also, make sure you bet these races at TwinSpires.com. Play the $50,000 Summer Showdown at TwinSpires.com. Through September 1st, parlay winning $10 show bets into thousands. But only when you play at TwinSpires.com, where players win.